Hello everyone, I am going to show you how you can set up QMO for Raspberry Pi on Linux platform. So here few are the steps which you need to perform. Let's first download the Raspberry image. I am just creating one directory, QMO RPI, go to QMO RPI and you can use wget command to download the image file. Take some time. You can also download this file from browser, but if you have a command, then you can use this command wget. Okay, so this file is download. Then we need to download this QMO kernel file. Same you can use wget and paste the URL. Now we have two files. So now we need to unzip this file uh, and master.zip file. So you need to install these two utilities. So first is the exit exit util. It is already installed in my machine, and also the QMO system. Okay, so it is saying QMO system is already in the newest version that means it is already installed so now we will use unxz command to first extract this raspberry pi image again this command will take some time because it is going to extract the entire image of raspberry pi Now we can unzip this master.zip. So now we have this folder QMO RPI kernel master. So here we have kernel and device tree file which we need to pass when we are going to launch the Raspberry Pi image. Okay, so now we need to perform fdx-l command to check the sector size of this image so for that you need to run this command So here you can see the image 2 is starting with this sector. So we need to multiply this value with 5.2 to find the offset value of this image. So you can open calculator. So 
already calculated. So this is the offset value you are going to get. Okay, so you can note it down this value. And before that, we need to create one directory on this location. So in my PC, it is already created. That's why it is showing file exists. Then we need to use this command. So what is this command is guys, we need to mount this image because we need to update one file. So here you can see this offset value I got from here. Okay. So if you are using different image because when we will go to the Raspberry Pi site, you will get a lot of download options. So sometime image size may be vary from 5.2 MB to 2.5 GB. So if you are going to use any different files, this size will vary. So that's why you need to calculate the size using FD-L command. Okay. Just make sure you are using the right image with right offset. And now we need to mount this file on MNT Raspberry, which we have already created the folder. Okay, sorry. I didn't pass the image file ext4 and image file is okay so it's mounted now we need to update one file because without that Kimo will not be able to execute this image file so you need to update this file and just comment up comment and uh, after that this is done now we can unmount we unmount the file okay now all set so we need to use this command guys i will explain this command what what is going to happen with this command so in this command we are going to use qmu system arm and here we need to provide the path of the file so here this is the path of the files which i have changed so i need to remove this location I will also rename this QMU folder so you can simply rename this QMU. This is long name. That's why I am renaming it QMU. So now I just rename it. You can use this name also, but this is a long name. So I thought we can have the short name. So you can just rename it. I will just, I will just copy this file name and uh, So I have provided the path, then uh, we have this DTB file. So guys, I have renamed the folder QMU. So this DTB file is located in the QMU folder. And in the kernel flag, you need to pass the kernel, which is located into the QMU folder. So this is the kernel image. Now you can enter. QMU, QMU kernel blaster Y. Mm -hmm. 
okay so it will be only one cube So you can see Cubo uh, launched the Raspberry Pi image. Let's wait for few more minutes. guys it's first time launching that's why it's taking time but next time onwards it will not take much time Okay, you can simply select. Okay. Enter username. You can keep any username or any password. It's up to you. So this is only one time process guys, you don't need to do again and again. Okay, so you can pass the username, password. 